your dining room is the heart of your home, where meals are shared and memories are made. At Ashley, you'll find affordable dining furniture in a range of classic and modern styles. Ashley's small space sets and extendable tables are designed to fit beautifully into any space, from cozy breakfast nooks and kitchens to formal dining areas fit for a feast. And with mix and match seating options, everyone at your table gets the perfect seat. At Ashley, style is served. Shop in store or online today. Every team, every topic, everywhere. This is Believe. Hey, everyone. This is Heaving Bosoms, the podcast where two best friends celebrate seven years of podcast and one year of partnership. One love, what we love. HBs, it's time to pat ourselves on the back, update our various watches, and figure out some would you rathers. Ooh, it's our seventh anniversary celebration. This week on Patreon, we're serving up book six in the IAD series, Dark Desires After Dusk. We're finally getting into the brains of those Demon Boy brothers, which has been a much anticipated turn in the franchise over here at HBHQ. We've got Perma Screw Up Little Brother Cade and the human math genius he can never have. Unless she's actually a Valkyrie. Y'all, Cade cannot catch a break for even a moment in this book, and it's hilarious. That will release on the Patreon feed on Friday. Okay, today we've got part one of our Podiversary shenanigans. Get ready for our state of the podcast address, updates to our hard limits, kinks, and so much more. Here we go. Anniversary, LL Scar Edelim. <gasps> yeah. By the way, for me. context, that is your your name. That's my name backwards. Backwards. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Thank you. You know how many times I've said it out loud, practicing all day long. No. So oh. Fuck it out. <laughs> I would just like at random today, like be living my life, doop be doop boop, bop, beep be doop boop, and then also I'd be like, LL Scar Edelim. Yeah. LL Scar Edelim. <laughs> Scar, eat a limb. I Do gotta get it right on my I first love time. That. I love it. By the way, listen. Hello, y'all darb a nervous. Okay. <laughs> By the way, the reason that this is Mel, the reason that this is so on my mind is because yeah. I've been binge listening to our episodes from last the last year. Yeah. In preparation for Podiversary. Because we're doing prep for listener. I've also learned a couple of things. One I'm really not kidding when I say that we stop recording and I have I no forget. memory of what we've recorded because <laughs> like I've been listening to these episodes and it's like it's a whole nother podcast. I'm like, <laughs> wow, these two ladies are so funny. I am literally laughing until I almost pee myself at my desk. I'm happy to stop what I'm doing because this is so entertaining. And then I'm like, Sabrina. That's the vainest thing you've ever thought to yourself in your life, because that is, in fact, you on the uh -oh. podcast. <laughs> you know what, though, Sabrina? It's very good for my confidence, by the way. There though. we go. First of all, there's that. <laughs> but second of all, it has been validated by a lot of other people. This you know what I true. mean? This is like, true. We've gotten emails where oh, one of our listeners told us that like we need to put out a public service announcement about not listening to the podcast on a treadmill. 
<laughs> what? Because you you will giggle until you almost lose your balance and fall off. <laughs> nice. nice. No, literally, like the other day. So I do the thing where I will hyper focus on something that I'm doing until I'm like, oh my god, if I don't go pee right now, I will pee myself. Yeah. And a couple of times the last couple of days, I actually legitimately had to like run because I started laughing so hard that I almost <laughs> peed myself at my desk. And I was like, Sabrina, you are too old for this. <laughs> We are both too old and too young for diapers. Yeah, okay? I was going to say. Like, you're not allowed to wear diapers just because you're neurodivergent and apparently <laughs> hilarious. Okay? Like, so I've never felt more vain, but I've also never felt more confident. Oh, right? I love that. I love that energy coming into our seventh anniversary for me. And first, first anniversary for you. I was Happy on the I was on the episode last year. Yeah. This is we announced me as your co-host yeah. last year. Ooh. And can I just say, this is a wonderful transition into our first order of business, which yeah, is actual, actual the podcast state of the podcast. Of me just talking about how vain and <laughs> hilarious we are. Yeah, it's fine. Continue. <laughs> No, the state of the podcast. We have to give it gravitas, Sabrina. Come on. I would like to welcome bum, bada, Melody. Bum, 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 bum. I would like to welcome Melody Carlisle to the podium <laughs> for the uh, the state of the pod address. Address the state of yes, the pod the ad- ad- address. We're nailing this. Yeah. Okay. All right. So I just have to say we have to start the whole podcast off with a tiny, inadequate love letter to Sabrina because the last what? year yeah because the last year no, we has can, been so we wonderful we cannot start this off with me crying okay <laughs> no what? but like as I was going through old podiversary outlines like last year's was podcast still exists Like, that was a big thing (laughs) that happened last year is like, you know, I hung on by my teeth, but I did hold on. And then this year, what I wrote in the outline is podcast is so comfy again. Like having you here with me doing this, it it feels like coming home every time. And that I I cannot again, this is going to be small and inadequate because I don't have the words to express to you how important and how life-changing that has been for me over the past year. So I love you and I thank you. And that's the biggest part of the state of the podcast that I need to say out loud. Melody. I love you. I wasn't prepared for this. <laughs> Fucking, God damn it, Mel. Like, that means... That means so much because I've been listening basically since the beginning Mm -hmm. and the pod has meant so much to me for so long. And like, it was literally a dream come true when you asked me to be your Mm co-host. Hell, just when you asked me to like, come on and guest host. Uh, Yeah, 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 yeah. And this is especially like on my mind, right? Because I was going through listener emails over the last year in preparation oh. for today. And one of the things that kept coming up was people saying they're not necessarily talking about like they're struggling, but it's nice having this like right, right, space, right, right. this. And this was also on my mind because, again, I was listening to old episodes mm-hmm. over the last year. And one of the points we were talking about, like, I think it was my lady love, but it was like a shared pod lady love, essentially. Because you and I really do, God, we do end up with just... It's weird. Mind melt lady loves a lot. It's fucking weird. But basically, listener interaction, right? Because it's so personal between you and I, but we're not actually the only ones here, right? There's this invisible person here with us, even if they're not actually here kind of thing. And just so many of the emails were things about that, like... We don't know what they're going through, but for a lot of people, this is a really nice social interaction that doesn't require a lot of effort, but it's like hanging out with their best friends kind of Mm. thing. And we have no idea what it means for them to be able to like click in and listen every week. And all I could think was, I do know though, right? Because up until this last year, I was that person. 
Yeah, yeah, who, yeah, like, yeah. And I'm not going to get into it on pod because a lot of it is way too personal for yeah. even Patreon. Like, I've talked about it with you, but, like, I was that person, right? Like, yeah. this was the safe space. This was the happy place in a lot of really, really dark parts of my life. And so being so welcomed and supported mm-hmm. both of us as a crew mm-hmm. god a year ago we were nervous about the rebrand we were oh, nervous god. about me coming on as the full-time co-host and sorry for all of the word vomit like i said i was not prepared <laughs> i did not mentally have all of this in my head prior and i'm a verbal processor but that leads us into segue hard segue into hard successes segue. this year all right, listener. Hey, we have to oh talk about God. some successes because I'm not going to lie to you. We've been nailing it left and right. Okay. <laughs> I was, when, when I opened up this outline, I had a bunch of things to write down and you'd already written a lot of them down. And I was just like, oh my God, look at us. Yeah. Yeah. One okay. year. Bitch. One year. It's been huge. Okay. So the first thing was the rebrand, right? Yes. New co-host rebrand. New logo, new music. How does the show, you know, work now? And uh, our new music is so fun and inspiring. And Please like, ev- pause. Yeah. <laughs> the fuck? I swear to God, I have a black hole in every place that I've ever lived that just comes with me everywhere okay. I go. Right? Okay. Because when I was a, younger, this is a good theory. Before I had dogs. Things would just appear. My favorite sports bra I've ever had in my life. It fits me better than any bra I've ever, ever, ever bought or tried on in my entire life. Just appeared in my house one day when I was younger. (laughs) How did this not come up in our Death's Obsession episode? Because it seems like you might have a supernatural stalker switching out your stuff for higher quality, better stuff. Well, my supernatural stalker has real cheap taste. <laughs> like, I'm not saying this is good quality stuff. It's just my favorite stuff. Okay. That's fine. That's it's fine. It's the best yeah. fitting stuff. But it has evolved with the dogs, right? Okay. Aren't there tampons in that black hole now? So now there's tampons. I still don't. <laughs> I especially don't understand where those come from now, because guess what? Your bitch got ablated eight months ago, and so I don't even use tampons anymore. Yeah. Where are you finding tampons? The black hole. Yeah, so it has to be the black hole. But now, (laughs) now the latest thing that they've started finding is dum-dums. What? The The lollipop? Little lollipop boys? Mm -hmm. (laughs) Mm-hmm. I don't own a bag of dum-dums. I don't know that I ever bought a bag of dum-dums that has come to my home i've only ever bought it for like out yeah 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 yeah, yeah. like Like, events and stuff well i just grabbed a blue raspberry dum-dum from gumbo i heard a weird crunch and i was like the fact that i can hear that through my headphones while melody is talking means that's like a hell of a crunch what is that (laughs) it's a blue raspberry dum-dum incredible are they sorcerers that's what i'm starting to wonder yeah You know how Rooster was like kind of a slimy little business dog? Oh, yeah. You know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. My dogs are the sorcerer that you hear about in like a dumb fantasy, right? Like a B-list fantasy. Yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, my God. What's up now? Dum Dum Patrol. There's another Dum Dum? There's another fucking Dum Dum on my Where are the Dum Dum? Do I have... Oh my god, do I have somebody frogging in my house? Do you have then... a dum dum lover frogging? A dum-dum frogger. Yeah, we should be good to go now. Uh sorry, they have their own shoes now that aren't dum dums. So they should okay. stop their summoning circles. Anyway, let's fucking go. Okay, so the rebrand, I have loved it. It's been awesome. Our new music is so fun and inspiring and Mm -hmm. i think we really hit it with that one i feel like we nailed it i've been very much enjoying bopping to the music yeah 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 and end of every episode not gonna lie like not to give us a too big of a pat on the back but you know like well and it's funny right because i think maybe the reason that the new music especially works for me is because like the old music is like it's a very comforting sound you know But since I use that on Patreon episodes, I get the best of both worlds when I'm editing. I also feel that because it's just like years of history with that sound. And it just feels like curling up in a warm blankie. Right. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Uh Yeah. 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 So, wow. What a good job we did. All right. 
The next thing? We joined a network. We joined a network. Oh, oh my, my god. god. How fun. Oh my god. Like I don't even yeah. know what to say about that. Like we What? It was really exciting. We got like scouted and we joined a network and the wow. Wow. <laughs> things oh I wasn't expecting in 2024. <laughs> right? Right? Yeah. All right, the annual hashtag, Sabrina, I'm going to say it right now. I'm making a ruling. Sherlock Holmes is in 2024. We killed it. Over and done with. Yeah, win. I don't know why the NYPD doesn't just, like, have me on call. You know that what I mean? awful. Yeah, it okay. actually does sound terrible. I would, want it, mm-hmm. I would want a more whimsical organization to have me mm-hmm. on call, but, you know. And I do, like, Heart and Mercy's world, you know? I'd be okay with, like, her town. Ooh. I would totally yeah. be an as Sherlock Holmes for them. Oh, my God. I just read The Undermining of Toilet and Frank, and I have to tell you about it on a quickie. I cannot even. It's, it's so good. It's okay, ridiculous. Okay, no, you cannot tell me quite yet. I am going. Look, I will add it. I will move it to the top of my fucking TV. Burp, burp, burp. She says it again. And now four months later, nobody's going to be able to hear about The Undermining of Twyla and Frank because Sabrina will not have actually read it. Okay. Excuse the flip flop fuck out oh, of me. Oh, no. Excuse the French fried fuck out of me, ma'am. Okay? <laughs> it has happened with so many things. Whoa, it happened with Spy Master. Okay. Yeah, that's one of them. I'm going to think of more. Oh, oh, yeah? Mm hmm. Yeah, no, I'm sure I can do it. <sighs> yeah, I'd love to hear another one. Mm-hmm. No, there is another one, goddammit. Mm-hmm. Oh no, I almost had it. Now it's gone. Listeners screaming right now. They are. They are. You know what? Anyway. We're going to bookmark that, you know, in the dome and then oh, yes. it, noodle on it as yep, we go. That, and maybe yep. I'll come up with it later. All right. Yep. It's going to be okay. like 3 a.m. tonight when I wake up to a text message tomorrow that's like, yeah, <laughs> it's all caps. This. It's all caps. This. <laughs> okay. Yeah, we Sherlock Holmes left, right, and center. Mm-hmm. We mm-hmm. saw so many things coming. It's ridiculous. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And we're hot geniuses, I feel We are. Like. We are. I also just realized uh, we don't know our hashtag for this upcoming year, so we're going to figure that out. Oh, yeah. That usually, this up- it's really weird. It usually happens, like, organically toward the end of the year before. I don't know. It's weird. Anyway, okay. All right. HBHQ staff. <gasps> Excuse me. Hello. Okay. Um, yes. HBHQ. Used to only consist of Melody and Sabrina. Mm hmm. But we've taken on some part timers, okay? We have. Mm hmm. Yeah. We -hmm. have a resident podcast geneticist. We do. We do. Constantly on call. Uh huh. Uh huh. (laughs) She's Uh she's waiting at the edge of her seat at all times. For for any and all geneticists. Genetics questions? It's yeah. The one. Devin. Devin O. Constantly waiting Just by the waiting. phone. When we need her, she's always there. Okay. Oh my God. And like, listener, if you have not seen that post in the cult, it was one of the sexiest things I've read in 2024. Right? Absolutely. And that's saying something with our line of work. You know what oh I mean? Oh boy. Yeah, it is. <laughs> Especially with the rabbit holes we've been going down lately. That's what boy. I'm saying. Mm-hmm. All right. And then we have two meme geniuses that Mm -hmm. have just volunteered out of the mist yep mary hb mary has been with us for a very long time part Mm -hmm. of the Mm -hmm. hbhq staff Mm -hmm. and now she's joined by sarah f yep we appreciate your contribution we sure do and we holy shit oh we cackle hard it's fantastic (laughs) wonderful all right, so we nailed that because okay. that was something we did, you know. Melody, Melody um, is also um, the genius behind a brand new historical era. Oh, I'm sorry. You've got your HB resident scholars coming in right now. That's right. Is that you? That's us. You and me. We did it together. Come on. I don't. I feel like don't sell scho- yourself short, Sabrina. We've already covered that. I'm feeling very cocky. Right now, right? Like, we, there was a whole 10 minute, I don't know how much of it you're cutting out, but there was a whole like 10 minute conversation at the beginning of this about how confident and cocky and arrogant I feel and vain, right? Um, vain too. But, uh, scholar, that, that feels like a, that's a big no, word. We did some record breaking, world changing scholarship when we crystallized the new historical era Dickens times. 
You know what? All yeah, right? you're right. I'm a fucking scholar. That's Scholars. right. That's right. And you want to you know the reason that I say specifically? <laughs> I had to defend Why? Dickens times on social media <gasps> to somebody. Who came at our jugular? Well, because they came in with facts and like <laughs> actual Charles Dickens stuff. And I was like, sure. Dickens times is a vibe, my friend. It's, a, it's not. Is there an Oliver Twist anywhere about? In your romance you novel? You can't put a year <laughs> on this. No. No. Absolutely not. Is there abject poverty? Yeah. Might there be a poor house? Yeah. These are all Dickens Times qualities. Are there sad children? <laughs> there starvation and somebody yeah. in a petticoat? Dickens Times. Are people freezing in a gutter? Okay. Yeah. It might be Dickens Times. Is gin the devil? Yes. Might be Dickens <laughs> Times. Okay. If you were making a TV version of it, would you put a gray filter on that camera? <laughs> it's Dickens times, okay? Oh my God, Melody. Melody, wait, I have to share with you. My fucking social media feed has been taken over by Twilight memes and like Ooh. ads for like Twilight stuff. God, why? But there's this fucking keychain that somebody has. Uh-huh. That's this transparent blue thing that when you hold it up to your eye, it makes the whole world like blue gray, like the Twilight movies. <laughs> oh my God. The only thing better than that would be like an AI that also puts bad wigs on everyone. You know, oh that is it's so great. Now, I, <laughs> it takes everything in me not to send you every single one that comes across my feed. Stop holding yourself back. Actually, I was just talking to my neighbor about this because she recently, she's a millennial woman, but she recently discovered the Twilight movies. And we had this whole conversation at the playground where I told her about how I learned this year that, God, why can't I ever remember his name? The jock one, Rosalie's husband. Is it Emmett? Evan? Emmett. Thank you. Wow. Wow. When he's just holding a bag of hard-boiled eggs, a clear plastic bag of hard-boiled eggs in the first movie, <laughs> I discovered that this year on, like, the sixth watch or something. I don't remember that scene. I don't Charissa know. pointed it out yeah, I don't. I don't know how. I know. I'm sure she did. I, oh. I just have no memory of it. Wow. Yeah. Anyway, we had to brag about our next success. Yes. Okay. Because, like, this is... Honestly, like, I don't know how we find the time. Frankly. This was blood, sweat, and tears. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And listener, I'm sure you know exactly what we're talking about. That is the Patreon revamp. Boy. The graphics alone that I slaved over. You, mm -hmm. Ugh. Just fucking inspired. If I say <laughs> Graphic so design <laughs> is your passion, Melody. <laughs> yes. So the Patreon revamp has been really, really wonderful. And more than that, the Patreon is so super regular. So regular. And we are always recorded ahead. It takes its prunes. It's so good. Yes. It has got its Metamucil on tap. Okay. Our Patreon. So regular. Yeah. So solid, but not too solid. Right. Exactly. Just the perfect mm, consistency. Just slips right on out every day. <laughs> Okay, all right, all right. We might, we might be taking that metaphor a little too far at that point. No, no, we're not. <laughs> anyway, the fact that you and I read so much outside of podcasts, which like hasn't always been possible, is super awesome. So we always have things to talk about. I fucking love it. That is our next just knocked it out of the park. Everybody sleeps, but no two people sleep alike. At Coop Sleep Goods, we celebrate the way you sleep differently. We believe everyone deserves a great night's sleep with their own pillow. And the adjustable, customizable Coop pillow makes it easy. Whether you're a side sleeper, back sleeper, or even a starfish, we've got the perfect pillow for you. Crafted with our innovative memory foam and microfiber fill, our hypoallergenic pillows adjust to you, not the other way around. Just tailor the fill for the perfect fit. Add some in, take some out, until your pillow's just right for you. See why luxury hotels and spas worldwide feature Coop Sleep Goods and why we have tens of thousands of five-star reviews. With our 100-night risk-free trial, you've got nothing to lose, except those sleepless nights. Get 25% off your first order when you visit coopsleepgoods.com slash comedy. That's C-O-O-P sleepgoods.com slash comedy. Your dining room is the heart of your home. 
where meals are shared and memories are made. At Ashley, you'll find affordable dining furniture in a range of classic and modern styles. Ashley's small space sets and extendable tables are designed to fit beautifully into any space, from cozy breakfast nooks and kitchens to formal dining areas fit for a feast. And with mix and match seating options, everyone at your table gets the perfect seat. At Ashley, style is served. Shop in store or online today. And our second to last success. Okay. The next two are melody specific. What? There's only one more. Oh, I know. So this success is on an episode. Mel talked about these delicious peppermint candy cane Oreos. I did. Off brand. And listen to this. Mel is way more selfless than I am because when she went to the store to buy me some and sent them to me, they did not have them anymore. So she no. did take part of an unopened pack and send it to me. That's how much I love you. But the, the reason that this is a success Mm. is there's about 8,000 things that you said that you would send me and about 8,900 things I said I would send you. <laughs> and not a single thing has made it Man, into the mail. You know what? It's just I like, never. <laughs> it's like there's a block between us and the post office. You know mm-hmm. what I mean? Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. <laughs> Unless it's peppermint candy cane Oreos. Yeah, I'm still waiting for all those beads. Yep. All I'm the sure there's beads. something that I need to send to you. I'm sure of it. If I move my head, I can see them. <laughs> I'm looking at them. I can see exactly where they are right now. I, I can also see all of the things that um I've told listener that they've sent me, right? Listeners sent me things. Oh my god. Um, listener and, has sent us so many things this well, year. Listener has sent me things, like lots and lots and lots and lots of stickers. And half of those stickers are yours. And I was like, yeah, I will absolutely get those to Melody. They're Ooh. still, I know exactly where they are. They're just, I, I'm looking Ma'am. at them. I'm looking at them right now. You have been holding out on stickers with me? Yeah. Wow. Our next section is things to improve. And I think that goes on the list. Oh, yeah. For sure. I should, I should have added a Sabrina mailing things to Melody. <laughs> so the final thing, the final okay. success you started this off with thanking me and loving on me. Yes. And because I am who I am in my head, I was doing this now, which is why I didn't just tag along there. Um, because I had an order <laughs> in my head for how the day was going. <laughs> but I cannot mm-hmm. possibly put this more succinctly than a listener who emailed us. Oh. And said, they were reminded, what a fucking badass you have been, Melody. Oh. I can't imagine how tough it could have been to come completely scramble to change the entire pod when Aaron left, but you did it. You held down the fort while you worked to put it back together. You were dealing with the Kickstarter for bonkers. You were moving. I'm sure there was plenty going on behind the scenes that we cult members were completely unaware of. And you were also momming and wifing and those things on their own are exhausting. You're a fucking rock star. And I thank you for being there without even really knowing it for those of us who might be struggling to be hilarious and honest and open. And I couldn't possibly phrase it any better than they did because they hit everything on the head you have so much that you handle and manage on a daily basis and this Mm -hmm. thing that you started seven fucking years ago yeah is flourishing all because you fucking put in the work and you're amazing and working with you is incredible and being able to be open and honest you're just wonderful mel thank you oh my gosh thank you sabrina thank you listener oh we love you okay That actually is a really good lead up to one of the things we need to improve. Okay. (laughs) (laughs) You're allowed to bask in your own glory for a second, Melody. I can't. I can't do it. (laughs) Cry, Melody. Cry. (laughs) (laughs) That is. I need to improve on responding to nice emails. I respond to any negative email almost immediately. (laughs) And I cannot for the, I have such a hard time responding to nice emails, even though they make like my week and they change the trajectory of my mood. You should hear the conversations that we have after she gets one of those emails. Oh my God. Especially because like half the time I'm the one who brings it to her attention because I'm the one who manages our email. I probably shouldn't admit to that because I've been really not graded at the last month, but whatever, man. 
uh, you're not, you're better than me. <laughs> but like, so. I, like she squeeze. It is nonstop squeeze. She sends me drafts of like oh responses, and then she just stops. And they're like, like, "Hey, Mel, your, Mel, your draft is still in the fucking email." <laughs> <laughs> I'm a mess. Okay, but just know that I see them and I love them and I so appreciate it. And I'm sorry that I have a hard time processing and responding to nice nice things nice comments <laughs> okay this is not a thing to improve this is an abject failure mm. and that is me <laughs> <laughs> accidentally being a spoiler princess <laughs> <laughs> when i saw this on the outline mel i cackled <laughs> Because you're so damn good at it. Uh oh. Oh my God. I'm just stewing. I'm just stewing over here. I'm going to do so well at it, it into the next fiscal year. Okay. Because he I mean, bosoms runs on a fiscal year, October to October. Yeah. Yeah. Uh-huh. <laughs> we'll check in next year. Yeah. Mm, we'll check in. Yeah. Yeah. No, I think the funniest thing is listening to these old episodes and like it comes up in all of those too. It's just not quite as egregious as it's been the last couple of months, right? Um but also also I'm just learning to adapt because I did in fact I'm done with clean finish. I yeah. like, there's also I was like I can't fucking let Mel do it. Better keep I can't your shit do it together. I'm, and it's so much yeah. easier when I don't have a nemesis to deal with. You know what I mean? Like when I'm for just getting sure. it on odd, like it's easier when I don't have a nemesis yeah. fighting me yeah. for it. Absolutely. Okay. Uh, so next up, HP yeah. World Tour. You know, I might have lost it in my junk drawer. You know? We took one step forward. I did go to a convention. There we go. Sabrina went to Steamy Lit. Mm-hmm. There was HB representation mm-hmm. at Steamy Lit in host form. Mm-hmm. All right. Yeah. Not just not just fan form. Yeah, that's huge. Mm-hmm. And yeah, listen, oh, we just at some point we'll work on it. I mean, we are working on it because we are um plotting this is a little little teaser, but we are plotting a big uh meetup next year in Las Vegas. We are we are plotting a Magic Mike XXL inspired meetup in Vegas that is on the docket. So, you know, keep your ear out. Keep your ear out. Keep your yep. eye out. Keep your ear to the ground. Keep all your all your senses on lock. Yeah, we'll let you know. We'll send out the bat signal. <laughs> is that is that enough? I'm so sorry. Your Aphorisms? hand motion reminded me Is that what that of, is? Your hand motion reminded <laughs> me of the tentacle penis I read about last night. <laughs> Which feels very on brand. That so. is absolutely <laughs> us. Yeah. All right. <clears throat> now we have to talk about the celebrities that we have hooked into our tentacles. Oh, my okay? God. We have to talk about new HB authors yep. that we're kind of obsessed with and also have spoken to us several times i would say would yep. you classify it as several times i would say times? several times mm-hmm. yeah that's what mm-hmm. i'm saying we're basically all best friends now i you know and let me tell you <laughs> these people are better at sending us things than we are at sending each other oh, things oh my god isn't that the truth jesus okay so the first one is victoria aveline i mm-hmm. screamed about her clacanian series until she deigned to realize that i exist and that mm-hmm. was an incredible moment in my life. I'm not going to lie. I was <laughs> so happy for you and Nick. But the feeling of loss <gasps> that I was not a part of the Victoria Aveline screaming. Oof. Yeah. But it's OK because she sent us books. All three of us. Oh, my God. She sent us the most beautiful, wonderful care packages with like special editions and stickers and this like foiled art it was beautiful one of the nicest things ever it is yeah it's in a place of glory on the shelf absolutely also speaking of gifty gifts we've got yeah. two other gifty gifts <gasps> in the yes. last year from authors that have deigned to acknowledge our existence yes 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 we got and this sent me talking like thinking about this earlier sent me right fucking back down the rabbit hole i am crawling yeah. back into that rabbit hole k lorraine yeah sent us the most beautiful copy 
of Deal with a Demon and other yeah. gifty goodies. A lot of it was part of their Kickstarter. And yes. I, I think they might be doing a Kickstarter in the future. So, like, keep your ear keep out. Keep an for eye that out too. because, like, these books are beautiful. Mm-hmm. Like, we got Deal with the. And, and does yours have, like, a little yes. story that says something about horny toads? I don't remember exactly what it says. She, she wrote, it's horny toads. Yeah. <laughs> and then signed it. Ah! Beautiful. Oh my god! Feeling. And also, she part of that package is one of the best stickers I've ever gotten in my life, uh-huh. and that is a puffin that says it's a crisis because one of the characters can't stop talking about puffins and how their ecosystem is being destroyed. It's being and destroyed. It's amazing. Mm-hmm. Also, is that the book package that came with the tiny crocheted pierced penis? Absolutely. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Absolutely. I love that thing. And I forget that it's out every time I take pictures. Agreed. And then I send it to people and they're like, what is that? And I'm like, what? oh, you know, it's just a tiny little uh, pierced penis crochet. It's just a really casual, tiny pierced penis. It's a craft. Mm-hmm. Okay. Mm-hmm. It's a craft. It's a craft. It's also purple, by the way. It's, yeah, it's, it's a demon yeah, dick. Yeah, because it's demon dick. Yeah. It's a super casual demon dick. And then. Listener, if you've listened to the pod any time in the last six months, <laughs> you know that I'm a little obsessed with a little author named Emma Ham. Yeah. And she sent us a beautiful copy of Whispers of the Deep. Yeah, she sent and it's us gorgeous. special editions of them. And the art on that book is ridiculous. It is so pretty. Oh I... my God. And like, cle- off, like, we're not in pod for gifts, right? That is not the reason we're in podcasting. No, they are a wonderful bonus. But holy it, shit. These, these gifty gifts make my day every fucking time. Yeah. Use my little ding dong brain every yeah. fucking time. And <laughs> listener, uh, to go along with this little Emma Ham thing, just a, a spoiler. Next month, we are having a author hang with Emma Ham. Yeah, she's going to come hang. November or someday. I'm very excited about it. We'll let mm-hmm. you know the exact date because yep. we know it um in our calendar and we yep. don't know it in our current brains. Yep. Yep. Is how that works. And then we have two oh more new God. HB authors because we had oh author God. hangs with them and they were fucking delightful, wonderful gems. Yeah. Also great sports for guinea pigging our new author hang style. That's right. Wow. They nailed that, too. They sure did. Nailed it. Yeah, I was in charge of making the uh, RuPaul Drag Race trivia, and I haven't seen a single episode. Uh, (laughs) But you know what? You nailed that. Except for one of the questions, not a single answer was correct. (laughs) (laughs) I don't remember that part, but okay. (laughs) I'm still going to chalk it up to a huge success. (laughs) I'm going to as well. (laughs) But we would like to welcome M.A. Wardell to our little H.B. Tentacle love snuggle. Yeah, Hold. M.A. Wardell. We'll snuggle oh you like any time. Absolutely delightful. Also, Marshmallow Mountain Boys comes out soon. I know. If it's not already out. I, I know. am frothing. I'm rabid for it. Uh-huh. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I'm so excited mm-hmm. for it. And then, holy ball sack, this was wild to me that we speak to her. And like uh-huh. she knows we exist and stuff. I met her in person you at Steamy Lickon. Oh my god! I didn't even moo at her. You didn't even, and that was also a feat. Mm-hmm. But everybody knows how obsessed I have been with the Taken to Varaxia series. Yep. And we have spent face to face time with Elizabeth Stevens. Okay. We got some good fucking book wrecks out of that too. Oh my God. Yeah. Yeah. So, wow. We are nailing it as far as getting new HB authors. Good job, us. We also have a couple of miscellaneous little things, right? Okay. okay. Uh, this year, Melody moved approximately 8,000 gazillion pounds of mulch all by her lonesome for her birthday. And dirt. And dirt. And dirt. Yeah. All on her own Z's. Oh, and it was the best. In the whole wide world. Mm-hmm. It was roughly 80 wheelbarrows of joy. Yeah, um, but shockingly, mm. she's not creating a business about that. Instead, she is starting <laughs> two new brands. Well, uh, Mel's Cunt Punch Extravaganza and Squelchers, neither of which I would like to remind you are HB endorsed. This is a Melody 
only <laughs> business endeavor. Yeah, endeavor. Uh, and we they support are sister her. brands. We support her from afar. And I'm just saying that if you want the VR experience of a lifetime, come over to Mel's Christmas time cunt punch extravaganza because it'll rock your world. It'll rock something. Yeah. <laughs> it'll rock all the things. Just a one two. Yeah, and at the end, you can have a complimentary squelcher. Have you listened to that episode recently? No. <laughs> that co- that entire that entire conversation is one of the most unhinged things I've ever heard. In my life. Um, uh, no, it's worse. Re-listening to it is a it? year late. Yes, it's Ugh. fucking wild. It's the New Year's Eve episode, by the way. Um, oh, yeah. So. Okay. Yeah, go listen. Just listen to that, Mel. No, it's not the New Year's Eve episode. It's the Suzanne Park episode. No, that's Cunt Punch Extravaganza. Squelchers is a different episode? Yeah, because we (gasps) talked about squelching pussy juices. Oh, shit. I thought they were in the same episode. No, it's the New Year's one. You're right. My genius did lightning strike at two different times. Mm -hmm. Yep. Mm -hmm. Okay. All during the holiday season. It was the the holiday spirit was within (laughs) you. Bringing these gifts to the world. That's right. All right. And then I got a nemesis this year. Whoa. Somebody was coming for Sabrina. I don't know who they are. We don't like them. We don't like them. Pod is on board with uh, hating them together. Yeah, that is podcast approved. Because it means that Melody never got to scream about the Spy Master series. I'm really mad about that still. (laughs) I'm I'm being honest with you right now. I'm still mad. <laughs> because by the time I gave you permission to do it without me, you were like, mm-hmm. I don't remember those books. Not to mention that, like, listener didn't remember that we made that promise even. <laughs> and, like, we had already moved on to other things. More series of other oh, books. Man. You know? you, we missed the whole boat. The ferry passed us by. <laughs> you sure did. Sure did. Sure we did. never got to our destination. No, nope, we didn't. We missed that train by a mile. Well, and Sabrina, I don't know why you argued with me about the fact that we are scholars, because we learned a lot this year. (laughs) That's our next bullet point. (laughs) The amount of times we're listening to these episodes that, like, you're talking, and I'm just like, (gasps) (laughs) (laughs) wait, and then, like, all of the puzzle pieces. (laughs) Two of these happened in the same episode. Did all three of these happen in the same episode? Yep. They sure did. Maybe. You yeah. you and Nick during the Christmas episode really yeah. just blew my mind. Okay. Um, <laughs> <laughs> during the Christmas movie episode last year with Nick, mm. I did learn that mm. movies are filmed in hotels <laughs> and on sound stages. Okay. I added an asterisk to that, though, and I would like you to read the asterisk verbatim she added or that the outside might not be the same place as the inside comma comma give yourself a little credit yeah and i'm i'm gonna say that i don't deserve credit based on the conversations <laughs> in that episode because at one point we're all we're all talking and i'm like oh my god the door's in the wrong place <laughs> This living room would be in somebody else's blah, blah, blah. And then you and Nick are like, yeah, Mm -hmm. that's how that works. Yeah. Uh, Like, I remember trying to argue it, too. I was like, what if it's like long, skinny apartments, though? And then, and yeah, that's not how that works. So um, I appreciate you trying to give me credit, but I don't deserve it. (laughs) In that episode, I also was given a solid example of what nagging is <laughs> both in the movie and also from my co-host <gasps> for the day. How dare you? I would never. I also learned that not everyone <laughs> knows how to say their name backwards right off the top of their dome. You know, <laughs> I just thought that that was a normal thing. Universal knowledge. Everybody knew. <laughs> It's covered in third grade. <laughs> yeah, like I was like, oh yeah, of course Melody knows that it's El Sol Car Edel M, you know? <laughs> um, they don't. Yeah. They don't. Couldn't be. Couldn't um, be. Geldar Benerbus was Wasn't incorrect. it Ilsa Rack? Oh because yeah, it's... it is Rack, not Car. 
Yeah, it's rack. Asshole car. I, damn it, I said it right the first time in this episode, though. <laughs> I said no, it. you did it. You did I, it. Yeah, all of that practice for just one shot. And I got that shot, but then I, I flopped. <laughs> The HB story. (laughs) (laughs) That's accurate. What did you learn this year, Melody? All right, I learned several things that were very important. The first one was, I can still do a front flip, everybody, okay? With glasses on, like a fucking lunatic. Oh, yeah, especially that. I also learned, I, Sabrina put this in here, and I still disagree with it, but Mm -hmm. I will read it out loud because... I am a good co-host who honors Mm -hmm. the Mm -hmm. outline. Mm -hmm. Uh, Allegedly, I learned what a gusher versus a gogur is. Listener, if you need a confirmation (laughs) of this learning experience, it is New Year's Eve by Katrina Jackson, that episode. Go listen. I'm certain I knew what a gusher was. And I just, I just, you know, I saw a a gogur when I said a gusher or when you said a gusher. I believe that's what happened. And that is HB Cannon now. Yep. Mm-hmm. Sure is. <laughs> I'm never going to listen to that episode again. <laughs> <laughs> You're like, let me just hide my shame under the carpet. It's That's fine. right. Okay. And then on a more serious note, yeah. in our author hang with M.A. Wardell, a lot of us learned what a side is in gay culture. Because a lot of times people talk about being a top or a bottom or, you know, a switch or whatever. And then in his book, um, Napkins and Other Distractions, Mm -hmm. I nailed it. One of the characters describes themselves as a side. And that is somebody who is just not at all interested in anal penetration whatsoever. So they'll do all the other stuff and they're super into it and orgasms abound. But just like, you know, no anal penetration, please and thank you. Yeah. Very cool. This episode is brought to you by Progressive Insurance. Do you ever think about switching insurance companies to see if you could save some cash? Progressive makes it easy. Just drop in some details about yourself and see if you're eligible to save money when you bundle your home and auto policies. The process only takes minutes, and it could mean hundreds more in your pocket. Visit Progressive.com after this episode to see if you could save. Progressive Casualty Insurance Company and Affiliates. Potential savings will vary. Not available in all states. Everybody sleeps, but no two people sleep alike. At Coop Sleep Goods, we celebrate the way you sleep differently. We believe everyone deserves a great night's sleep with their own pillow. And the adjustable, customizable Coop pillow makes it easy. Whether you're a side sleeper, back sleeper, or even a starfish, we've got the perfect pillow for you. Crafted with our innovative memory foam and microfiber fill, our hypoallergenic pillows adjust to you, not the other way around. Just tailor the fill for the perfect fit. Add some in, take some out, until your pillow's just right for you. See why luxury hotels and spas worldwide feature Coop Sleep Goods and why we have tens of thousands of five-star reviews. With our 100-night risk-free trial, you've got nothing to lose, except those sleepless nights. Get 25% off your first order when you visit coopsleepgoods.com slash comedy. That's C-O-O-P sleepgoods.com slash comedy. Your dining room is the heart of your home, where meals are shared and memories are made. At Ashley, you'll find affordable dining furniture in a range of classic and modern styles. Ashley's small space sets and extendable tables are designed to fit beautifully into any space. From cozy breakfast nooks and kitchens to formal dining areas fit for a feast. And with mix and match seating options, everyone at your table gets the perfect seat. At Ashley, style is served. Shop in store or online today. All right, on to our various watches. Yeah, we've been on watch. We've had hard limits watch. Mm -hmm. All right, Mel. So Mel, formerly... Yes, Previously. Right. In less educated times, in darker yeah. times. Daddy kink and infantilizing nicknames was one for you, but Katie Robert did cure you of that. That's right. Yeah. Ranch dressing is still one of them. Still. Still a hard limit to this day. And 300-year-old vampire Navy SEAL saying, I'm Audi, pimp <laughs> juice, and you've been popping shit again. That's is, right. Uh, these are all current slash former hard limits for That's right. I have discovered some new ones, Sabrina. Would you like me to update you? Yes, absolutely. Please. Okay, perfect. My first addition to the hard limits list is 
having a partner be such a pillow princess that you have to hump <laughs> their leg to come. <laughs> I hate it that I can't. <laughs> Beautiful. I love it. I can't do it. Mm -hmm. I think this is going to come as a shock to no one. My next hard limit is parents making their children's sexuality about themselves. <laughs> what is this in reference to? Because I saw that and I couldn't remember what book that was. Not only Oh is my it, god, um, was that actually, Sorry Bro? Sorry Bro and um, Love and... Nope. Yeah, Love and Other Distractions? Love and Other Disasters. Disasters. Oh my god, yeah. Yeah. You're right. It you're came right, up in right. both of those episodes. Hard limit. It is not about you. Your next hard limit. I'm so glad you decided where to put it because I couldn't figure out where in the outline it had to go, but it had to go somewhere. <laughs> well, wait, I'm going to do the, the last one next because you oh, mm. reminded me mm -hmm. that one of my new hard limits is the phrase honey slicked petals. Yep. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you hated it. I'm in that not episode. Into it. <laughs> <laughs> you were like, uh, no. I <laughs> can't make not. that work. That's a hard record scratch for me. Okay. <laughs> I almost actually created a whole new watch of terminology. Yeah, 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 yeah. Ter terminology watch. <laughs> um, so we'll see how that happens in future yeah. years. We're gonna forget that I ever said this, but continue. who knows? It might evolve organically. Okay, and I'm not super sure if this is a hard <laughs> limit, okay, <laughs> or if it is just an enduring mystery, <laughs> and that is money laundering. Melody, oh. I need you, if you don't re-listen to any episodes, okay, <laughs> if you don't re-listen to any episodes, I need you to go re-listen to Forever Blue, because I think it is one of I the did. best episodes. Is it isn't that episode hilarious? It's hilarious. It's like, that's when I almost peed myself during. It was just yeah, like, dude. banger after <laughs> banger, and then like, the, the end where I was like, plug your ears, plug your ears, and you're just like, but, no, shh, 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 <laughs> it was beautiful. It was hilarious. Well, I just need to update you and everyone you that have physical paper in front. I of do. Now? I do. I prepped for the assignment. Okay, because listener tried. <laughs> <gasps> Did you? <Listener> bring <laughs> Listener tried so many times. Okay, and in mm -hmm. so many creative ways. Mm -hmm. <sighs> Hannah G. <laughs> I can't believe you printed them off. <laughs> First of all, she wants to give you props because you did a great job starting the explanation. Good job, Thank Sabrina. You. Thank you. And then she says, one way is to artificially inflate your profits. Classic example is vending machines. Let's say you collect all the cash from the machine, which is $100. And then you're also running an illegal gambling thing, which made $100. And then you just report that you made $200 from vending machines, and now bam, the money is clean because it entered the legal banking system with FDIC insurance in parentheses. Sure, you pay some taxes, but that can be the price of laundering. Yeah. And, okay, I think I might need to make something, you know, as clear as mud, <laughs> probably. I'm going to try, but who knows what I the opacity wait. is going to end up being. <laughs> Like, I get that, that very, what I think I don't understand is like the Ozark third party money laundering thing, but there's always a money laundering guy. You know what I mean? Like in, in Forever Blue, there was a money laundering guy and like, who owns the business? Like, is he opening businesses on behalf of Cartel Man? Like what is happening? Okay. But now Marty H just swung in like Tarzan. All right. And they tell me, Melody, it's all about taxes. <laughs> the money isn't clean because the average citizen can't tell it was sent to a cartel guy. It's clean because the government says that looks legit when it looks at tax information. And then they go into an incredibly wonderful That's email. the email, by the way, that I'm referencing in one of the episodes where I read it. And I was like, yep. oh, Mel's not going <laughs> <Mel's not gonna laughs> to get this. Nope. And you know what? You got it. And that's why I know it's good. <laughs> but other than that, you know, it, wow, there is a lot in there. I can't.
cannot believe you printed that off <laughs> in the year of our Beyonce 2024. <laughs> of course I did. Marty is going to get the due that they require for all of their hard work. And that includes being a physical copy that's going to live in my office that I can reference anytime I need to. Okay? This is research for me. <laughs> and then finally, Mary. HB Mary came in and she said, she said, a while ago, I saw a TikTok saying that if you don't understand something, ask chat GPT to explain it in the style of RuPaul. So I did. But I didn't stop there. <laughs> and the following are some answers. And then she says, if you want to make a Patreon video of Melody reacts to chat GPT explanations of money laundering, please let me know what tier and I'll upgrade immediately. <laughs> <laughs> but mon money laundering explained by RuPaul. There is also money laundering explained by Kaylee from Firefly. <laughs> mm -hmm. And that's shiny. There is money laundering explained by Eric, a.k.a. The Phantom. Of the opera, <laughs> mm -hmm. which is incredible. There's a lot of music references in that one. I don't know if you really saw that coming. And then finally, there is also money laundering explained in the style of <laughs> a Bachelor recap podcast. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I'm just going to read you a little bit of the RuPaul one. That's mm -hmm. all. I haven't seen this email. <laughs> incredible. Well, I'm, in I'm fascinated. I just Googled money laundering in our email. <gasps> and then I found it. That's how I did my research for today. Because mm. I mm. am a scholar. Mm. So uh, it says, Ah, oh, darling, let me sashay you through the glamorous world of money laundering where cash becomes couture. Picture this. Just like a fabulous drag transformation, money laundering takes dirty funds and gives them a stunning makeover, darling. First, you start with some ill-gotten gains, honey. Then you work it, <laughs> W-E-R-K. Through a series of intricate financial maneuvers, darling. It's all about concealing the source and destination of those dollars, just like how a queen hides her secrets behind layers of makeup and sequins. <laughs> you gotta strut your stuff through shell companies, offshore accounts, and shady investments, all while keeping up appearances like a true queen on the runway. In the end, it's all about making that money look sickening, honey. <laughs> <laughs> and that I think maybe worked shocking because I understand money laundering <laughs> less now <laughs> I think it's mostly because they started pulling out things like shell corporations yeah and, like I, all of I those big things I don't understand that. those I can get on board with the vending machine of it all well you know what Marty Marty was really great about they were like one of the biggest things is that, like, the big bad, the ultimate cartel person or whoever, ends up, like, creating a legal business and then just running it like shit on paper because it doesn't actually exist. Like, spending as much money as possible. No, spending as little money as possible while, while making all the monies and then paying taxes on it was my understanding. Thank you, Marty. You're the best. All right. So that was our money laundering segment. This can't, this can't be an annual thing. <laughs> <laughs> Just letting you know. It depends on whether or not listener continues to try to educate me, frankly. <laughs> We're just going to have money. There's going to be, this, it's going to turn into an annual money laundering episode. Where did you learn how to launder money? Oh, you know, Heaving Bosom's podcast? RuPaul taught me through the Heaving Ru Bosom's podcast. RuPaul taught me through the Heaving Bosom's <laughs> podcast. Mm -hmm. All right, Sabrina, last year you reported that your hard limits were foot. Anything foot. Pushing thousands of dollars of seafood off a table to bone St on it. Still accurate. I had forgotten about that. And the rage that I felt rereading <laughs> that on this on this outline just reinforced how I feel about it. It's bad. And the last one <laughs> was Poon Poon. This is what I'm saying. We almost need a terminology watch now because mm -hmm. I came across quite a few of them. Because squelching <laughs> pussy juices almost made it on this list. I had, you know what? Yeah, we should probably... Squelching pussy juices was rough, you know? Mm. But it did birth squelchers. And it that did birth squelchers. really is 
it's the, something. the important thing to remember. Again, not podcast endorsed. Uh, <laughs> I have a couple of new ones. Please tell us all. One is yeah. having uncomfortably loud sex in your parents' house when everyone else is trying to sleep. That's right. How dare you just for the cameras? Uh-huh. Keep, yep. keep it together over I, there. Yeah, I I didn't even have to re-listen to that episode to remember that one. I understand that there's a Prince Albert piercing on a prostate, but still, you gotta lock it down. I just, <laughs> boy, there's this lock thing up. called a hand that over can a cover mouth. a mouth. The other, is, there's a couple of uh, Deadpool baby legs. <laughs> There's no good way to segue into that. Um, <laughs> that full baby legs. Uh, isn't that from a hunger like no other? Yeah. Uh-huh. Because he, he <laughs> gnaws his own leg off. That was rough. Yeah. Uh, and, and in fact, we have now, if you are on Patreon, we do have a Deadpool baby hand now. <laughs> so really, it's just Deadpool baby parts. Uh, <laughs> not a fan. Another one is mooing at Anita Kelly. That's a hard, hard limit. limit. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. It's a hard one. Can confirm. Did not moo it, Anita Kelly. I think, but you might have though. And then I was reminded of this in our Gogurt gusher conversation. That oh, uh, I was wondering that's where this, where this came, came from. from. Is I'm cool with pumpkin flavored cum. I'm cool mm-hmm. with peppermint flavored cum. I'm cool with all, but but um, blueberry flavored cum specifically in the consistency of. Gogurt, a la <laughs> Finley Fen esque mm-hmm, buckets of cum mm-hmm. guarantee. Uh, specifically, blueberry flavored cum is a hard, hard limit. All you right. can flavor it pretty much anything else. Maybe not fake cherry, but like really <laughs> most anything else, and I'd be fine. But blueberry, I mm, doesn't do it for you. I, it doesn't. It doesn't. Yeah, no. <sighs> yeah. Boy, and we have a couple of podcast hard limits because for the we, first time ever, we fucked ourselves at least. Two or three, three times, times. Minimum. three of them, yeah. yeah, at least. Uh, surprise duets or quartets or even trios. Uh, I just don't trios. remember any of those. Any any surprise, surprise? not standalones. Oh, because we had dragons the... captive dragon deal with a dragon. D- mm. No dragon not captive deal with is a the dragon. Next dragons one captive the, the one the one with the people. Yep. The mirror, yeah. like the and they they jack off in the mirrors. One of them is a secret dragon, mm-hmm. and another one is just a lady, um, yep. trying to be a nurse. Okay, yep, mm-hmm. she's just trying to live in the world, and uh, she gets a nurse job. And I recap that with Sarah Wendell. Why can't yes. I remember the name? Because we did the rest of it on Patreon together, like that that whole series. Fantastic. That was a rabbit hole I went down. It sure was. But yeah, there was that. There was the black sail pirate. Pirate Boys? Yeah. And what was the third one? I don't know. I don't know. I think I was talking about the next hard limit as like the third time we fucked ourselves over in general. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, New pod hard limit is 16 year old nipples. And to clarify, (laughs) that is an author making you think a super graphic sex scene is between a 37 year old misogynist and a 16 year old baby for so many pages so many pages or any pages yeah really. but especially mm-hmm. so many you know mm-hmm. egregious hard limit on the podcast yeah 16 year old nipples <laughs> okay it's by cassie alexander and kara yes. lockhart dragon but boys why can't i find the rest of it it's the wardens of other world series maybe it's not that's the spinoff series <laughs> anyway <laughs> We're just gonna, I'm just gonna continue on while you look for this. Uh, we have a new section, and it's HB Etiquette. Uh, That's right. Brand new. Dragon Called. Yeah. The first book is Dragon Called. That tracks. So, HB Etiquette, we have learned that HB Etiquette is stomping as you approach a room. Mm-hmm. Uh, in case of tomfoolery or shenanigans to announce your entrance. Sabrina, I'm not disappointed with you often, but this is a moment in which I am disappointed in you. Because I forgot to change the phrasing, didn't I? Because we were the originators of this etiquette, and somehow... <laughs> I fucked it up. You forgot half of it, and you are the chief originator of the yeah, half we, you forgot. 
And that yes. is, you also must, because this is- Oh, Chewbacca. What is it? Like, this is a life advice podcast, and you know that, you know? Yep. This is an educational podcast. Everyone mm-hmm. knows mm-hmm. it, yep. okay? It's been said mm-hmm. many times before. Yeah, they couldn't live their lives without our, the, our advice. Yeah. I I won't say it, but someone else has, I'm sure of it, <laughs> you yeah. know? Yeah, somebody out there. Yeah. So the etiquette that we are reminding you of today is that you got to- Chewbacca pin up and stop uh, <laughs> as you enter rooms that you think there might be shenanigans or tomfoolery going on in. If you hear making out sounds, you gotta as you stomp, stomp, stomp to make or your presence Or even if you known. just hear noise, like any, any, it, it, just, just in case, do it no matter yeah. what, you know? Yeah. Just upon yep. entering any room. I have modified right. our HB etiquette. Thank you so much. It is noted for the record. This episode is brought to you by Progressive Insurance. Do you ever think about switching insurance companies to see if you could save some cash? Progressive makes it easy. Just drop in some details about yourself and see if you're eligible to save money when you bundle your home and auto policies. The process only takes minutes, and it could mean hundreds more in your pocket. Visit Progressive.com after this episode to see if you could save. Progressive Casualty Insurance Company and Affiliates. Potential savings will vary. Not available in all states. Everybody sleeps, but no two people sleep alike. At Coop Sleep Goods, we celebrate the way you sleep differently. We believe everyone deserves a great night's sleep with their own pillow. And the adjustable, customizable Coop pillow makes it easy. Whether you're a side sleeper, back sleeper, or even a starfish, we've got the perfect pillow for you. Crafted with our innovative memory foam and microfiber fill, our hypoallergenic pillows adjust to you, not the other way around. Just tailor the fill for the perfect fit. Add some in, take some out, until your pillow's just right for you. See why luxury hotels and spas worldwide feature Coop Sleep Goods and why we have tens of thousands of five-star reviews. With our 100-night risk-free trial, you've got nothing to lose, except those sleepless nights. Get 25% off your first order when you visit coopsleepgoods.com slash comedy. That's C-O-O-P sleepgoods.com slash comedy. Your dining room is the heart of your home where meals are shared and memories are made. At Ashley, you'll find affordable dining furniture in a range of classic and modern styles. Ashley's small space sets and extendable tables are designed to fit beautifully into any space, from cozy breakfast nooks and kitchens to formal dining areas fit for a feast. And with mix-and-match seating options, everyone at your table gets the perfect seat. At Ashley, style is served. Shop in-store or online today. All right, we've got Kink Watch. My former ones were a duke who gives you leave to use his Christian name. Mm-hmm. Oral before kissing. Mm-hmm. Uh, figuring out alien genitalia in consensual and exploratory ways. I would love that <laughs> tentacle penis book I just read. <laughs> I bet. Having sex while your partner is covered in the blood of your enemies. <laughs> Big kink over here. Just read a book that I'm going to tell you about that has one of the best examples of that that uh-huh. i've ever read okay can't wait um a fancy man robe okay. last year i added a revenge outfit and mm-hmm. honeycomb and then this year i am adding when someone especially of the gentry tells you that every blue blooded vein in this body pounds with desire for you accurate <laughs> Does that make you a little tingly just thinking about it, Holly? Holy wow! <laughs> you need a minute? <laughs> yeah. Uh, mine, yeah. last year, we figured out that I'm really into a tax-deductible ass. That's right. And lying naked on top of somebody while they watch a show only I'm interested in. <laughs> That's right. And broken sad boys, especially if they're charming. A.K.A. Sebastian's. hmm mm-hmm. 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 And then uh, this year, <laughs> <laughs> I don't even know if she's going to be able to say this out loud. This year, I've learned <laughs> that um, my kink is characters whose ensemble include a frown, <laughs> a.k.a. a stoic MC who grounds me, <laughs> a.k.a. <laughs> Cage, the sexiest motherfucker I've ever read about in my entire fucking life. 
the ma- oh the, 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 the magical unicorn of a character mm-hmm. that I have never been more unhinged <laughs> about on a pod episode in my entire life. Incredible. Yeah, so we're just going to boil it down to uh, characters whose ensemble includes a frown. Because <laughs> it's less creepy than just putting Cade on <laughs> this list. And it's also more um, elucidating. You know, it's not every character with a frown, but it's a lot of them. <laughs> I think it's the ensemble part. <sighs> Cade yep. walked up with fuchsia eyeliner and that fucking <laughs> sleeveless, sleeveless jumpsuit. black <laughs> jumpsuit and a frown. <laughs> yep. <laughs> I don't even I don't even have to re-listen to that episode to remember that they wore that at the art gallery and then they wore those tight, tight bike shorts in bike that shorts. kitchen. <laughs> and a button down. And button down. <laughs> in case anyone was wondering. <laughs> Woo! Woo boy. All right. Uh man, why isn't Kate on obsessions? Because it's not really a watch. It's already a here. Yeah, it seems like a known. Boy, we've gone down quite a few obsessions rabbit hole watch this year. Uh, yeah. Y'all have heard quite a few of them because of our, as stated, um, loads of Patreon content nowadays. Because <laughs> we have decided that you have to come along on this journey with us. That's and right. You, see, you seem to enjoy it. Mm-hmm. Uh, Melody went down the Clicanian series. Hard. Mm-hmm. I went hard down it. It's now part of my DNA, I think. Mm-hmm. Uh, Sabrina almost quit the podcast. Yeah. <laughs> I had forgotten about that and I listened to that episode <laughs> and I was like, this has been fun. Thanks for, yep. uh, thanks for having yep. me. Uh, Eloisa James took over my whole mind, body, and soul for a solid 21 days. Yep. We couldn't stop with the Game Maker series by Cressley Cole. Yep. Um, Mel. Oh my God. Hard crawled into Theodora Taylor's hole. Yes. And Taylor Vaughn too, because Theodore Taylor writes with Eve Vaughn. They write dark alien romance, and I lost my ever-loving mind. I'm pretty sure you've told me about that, and I've forgotten about that. and then you forgot. I was looking for dark alien romance literally three days ago, so I will um, be looking that up immediately. Yeah. It's like dark light, though. You know what I mean? Yeah. like like, It's like a little darker. You also fell deep in middle of somewhere. I read... That is the other one. That is the the other other one. one. (gasps) That is the other one that listeners (laughs) never got to hear about. I knew it would happen in this episode. You asshole. That is one I am still angry about. I still want to talk about the rest of the books in the middle of Somewhere series. And you took that from all of us. (laughs) Well, I have read the next two books in the series. (laughs) So... But the fifth book is my favorite one. Oh, <laughs> fine. You can give me a you can give me a quickie on that. That's fine. Now, months after I've read it and forgotten every morsel that I loved the most, now so I can I'll, give her a quickie on it. I will I will oh. read it and we'll do a co-quickie where I'll remind you. I, I've heard this before. I've heard this story before. Okay. <laughs> I I don't know if we're making it to a second pot anniversary together, listener. I may have like like (laughs) sowed the seed of discontent. We shouldn't have reminded me about this. (laughs) Uh, Mel also went down the Outlaw series. Oh my god, I read every single Outlaw book Uh there was, and then I wanted more, and there wasn't any more yet. And who knows if there's ever going to be? Because ever going to be more is following her bliss, and that's fine. That's fine. But yeah, but I read all of them. I inhaled them. You. <sighs> this is one of my favorite authors of all time. And the joy that I have in my heart that you fell down the highwayman rabbit hole. Mm. Oh, wonderful. Victorian rebels. Just the joy I felt yeah. at your excitement about all of it. Also, realizing that I should have been more of a Sherlock Holmes the first time I read that book. Because, um, <laughs> <laughs> Revisiting that book was um, eye-opening in many ways. <laughs> um, That's right. Then Sabrina lost herself in Dublin, <laughs> on Dublin Street. Wow, Samantha Young. Sabrina might still, part of her is still, I think, in Scotland. <laughs> yeah, I think I'll be stuck there until I visit. Samantha Young 
got you by the gonads. And she was not letting go. <laughs> she sure did. It wasn't quite as bad as Eloisa James, but that series specifically, like, it took me by the throat mm-hmm. and just pinned me down and held that's, me. That's oh, right. Wow. That's right. Emma Ham took you to so many different worlds, Sabrina. <laughs> Emma, Emma Ham. Mm-hmm. Boy. We started you. with Whispers of the Deep, and then Sabrina did not stop. Y'all, that was the first five-star book, and I don't even put star ratings on shit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, like, the beginning of this year, I was like, this is a five-star book, and I've read it three times this year. Mm-hmm. Emma Ham She got you. Broke me. Yeah. She captured your imagination. All right. I went down the Spy Master's Lady rabbit hole, and Sabrina was blocked at every turn by our podcast nemesis. Oh, fucking dare that person. <laughs> don't they know that I was trying to tell the people? Don't they know that you had a partner in crime just withering on the sidelines <laughs> I waiting? Tried to, I even tried to bribe them with stickers, and I never <laughs> heard from them. You did. They, ne- they never reached out. It was radio silent from our stupid nemesis. To, to apologize. <laughs> there just wasn't apologize. even an acknowledgement of their crimes against no. humanity. No, and that's why they are still are our nemesis. Yep. Okay? Forever. That's just a part of it now. We don't hold grudges unless, you know, we do. And, and that when we do, is a grudge. Boy, we're we, for- we forget about it, except when it's not, when it, we shouldn't oh, have. Oh, but then when we're reminded. But then when we, rem- <laughs> <laughs> when we remember, we have a oh, lot of, a lot of feelings lot of about feelings it. feelings that we can't even tell you about. Um, Mel. Oh my God. Crawl right back into that bucket of cum. Oh no, I'm sorry. I swan dived into it. <laughs> you did. <laughs> will not have it described any other way you did drag me with you again though because i hadn't picked up any finley fen books in a hot minute and then yeah. i did read several of them in a row oh my after god we talked about it i haven't even told you but i just finished triggered by the orc her good. like mm novella it is so fucking good and then i was reminded that the one of the guy's dad is in yuled by the orc so then i reread a different novella that I had already read to make sure I knew all of the stuff that was going on and oh, no. relive it and stuff. Oh, it's the best. I'm picking up Orc Sworn again. I also read Widow and the Orc, and I did a whole Patreon episode about that because holy shitballs, that book might have actually broken me. Remember when I was like, I was not feeding people and like I didn't want to go H. to the H. county Mary fair with my H. family. H. Mary made memes about it. Like I have, I put them on social media. Don't worry. You were trying to decide between family time and orc dick, and, and reading the rest of that book. Yeah, and orc dick uh, did basically win. No, it technically lost okay it lost (laughs) i spent the whole day at the county fair and i had a really good time and i actually didn't think about the book at all but it was a hair's breadth away just by the (laughs) by the foreskin of the tip (laughs) that's right mel did go down the seven brides for seven a seven (laughs) the seven brides for seven alien brothers series i almost fucked it up too yeah 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 you did obliterate that series and i did just go down a honey phillips rabbit hole in general yeah just a general one yeah and i'm just excited that you're here with me now it was lonely yeah except ironically i haven't finished seven alien brides um <laughs> you haven't read all 24 books in the alphabet series i so have we are we're, in different tracks of hemispheres the yeah mm-hmm. but you know we're we're in there we're, we're, we're together, together. Mm-hmm. yeah mm-hmm. all right we both we locked arms we linked hands Boy, and we, we went skippity do dying into that maiden lane series <laughs> Ma'am. that was that maiden lane series i still want to finish that series with quickies we will like, i'm not still. i'm not on a historical right now but like yeah. next time you are we're going straight we're back going right to maiden back lane. in Mm-hmm. Holy shit, I love that series. Me too. And, you know, Dickens times in general, maybe. Who knows? Mm-hmm. Recently, I have hard gone down a Bryn Weaver rabbit hole. Yep, there's some quickies on that. I have read so many things by Bryn Weaver. And actually, that's she's one of the people. It's Trisha Wolf and Bryn Weaver is the book I want to tell you about today in this recording. It's about okay. two serial killers. Get fucking stoked you're gonna have to okay. keep it short because i also have a quickie for you yeah 
And then we committed ourselves to the Immortals After Dark series. At least 10 books. At least 10 mm-hmm. books. Yeah. And so far, we're fucking killing it. Oh, we're nailing it hard. Okay, not a single one has had to be rescheduled or anything. All right. Mm-hmm. And they are some of my favorite episodes. They were some of my favorite episodes to edit. (laughs) To be fair, we haven't had to reschedule any of them, partially because we just say, hey, I've already read book. When when can you record? That's right. That's right. (laughs) Yeah, we can just slip it in whenever. And then I just like lost myself. And, And we haven't even, okay, when this episode comes out, we will not have even spoken about impromptu match to listener because we recorded it a while ago. But since then, I have fallen down the rest of the Goliaths oh. After Dark series with Lily Maine. Goliaths After Dark. No. <laughs> I love you. I mean, it's, you're not wrong. It's Monster it's Dong also, WrestleMania. Yeah. Monster Dong WrestleMania um, took both of us yeah. by the throat and obliterated us. Have you read the third book yet? It's only yeah. eyeball. Oh, oh yeah. Okay, I, I read it. I finished the second book on audio it yesterday. I'm so, so excited good. for this third book. I oh. know I'm so we meet the character for it in the end of the second book and yeah. I'm just like smitten. Oh my god. A little bit smitten. Talk about a character whose ensemble would include a frown. <laughs> oh yeah. <laughs> And there's a headless horseman in it. Mm -hmm. And I hear that it gets used full. You want to talk about a check being cashed? All right. To be fair, though, Lily Mane is exceptional. Oh, yeah. Checks being cashed. Yeah, 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 yeah. She sticks the landing every time. I would also like to um, friendly punch her a little bit, though. Because I was distraught. I, so I finished the second audiobook for Goliath after wrestling yesterday. <laughs> Goliath after wrestling. No, damn it. <laughs> yeah, I love us so much. Monster Dong <laughs> Cock Mania. Yeah, we're so, hot dummies. Uh, <laughs> I love it. <laughs> Just, I started like eight different audiobooks yesterday and none of them were scratching the itch because none of them were good <sighs> enough compared. Like, I mean, they were good, but they just weren't. They weren't exactly what you needed. Monster Dong Cock Mania. Yeah. And I wanted that. And so I did restart the Monster series on audio. <gasps> Holy shit. That's like a nine book series. <laughs> and they're meaty boys. You still have. <laughs> oh my God, listener. This is I a still behind... haven't read lore. A behind the scenes thing, listener. Yeah. Uh, when before I was even co-hosted. This was after The Bride. This was like yeah, yeah, yeah. before Mel even asked asked if I wanted to be permanent co-host. We were going to do a monstrous recap like of the whole series on Patreon at some point. Yeah. I mean, and that's not off the table. It's not off the table. As far as I'm concerned. And then um, Mel has not followed me down this rabbit hole quite yet. I have been in it, okay, but I haven't been able to commit enough. No, and that's okay. So I added this to this list yes. because we did finish the Mate Games Pestilence series by Kaylorine mm-hmm. and Meg Ann and then I did immediately launch myself bodily into yeah. the Mate Games War which is the first quadrology in this uh-huh. series of uh-huh. quadrologies and I realized I've been sitting on the audio the fourth audio book of the Mate Games War at 89% no since last December stop it You're a monster. I finished it today. There we go. And then I did immediately go. I have like 18 audible credits right now. Holy shit. Just because I don't use them very often. And so Mm. they just, they build up until I do things like I did today where I went and bought every single Mate Games book that's out on audio and I'm going to re-listen to Pestilence (sighs) and I'm going to listen to Death and I'm falling right back down this. I went for yesterday. You are. Yesterday I was at a loss because I didn't have any audiobooks. And now I have a smorgasbord. Smorgasbord, smorgasbord. Yeah. yeah. Ooh, I'm excited for you. Also, 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 shout out the fucking website because I'm a fucking lunatic. I go through yeah, and yeah, get yeah. like websites for all of these things and like author websites and stuff. The fucking website for Kay Lorraine and Meg Ann's. It's beautiful. Books. It's beautiful. There's character cards with the characters yeah. speaking. Just if you want a very pleasant web experience, mm-hmm. go check it out. Yeah. Okay. Is it time 
I think it's time for Would You Rathers. I do too. And I do need you to know that I also have a paper copy of this. Why do you have a paper copy? I love you so I much, don't know. Mel. Sometimes I'm an old lady. You're so cute. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Sabrina. Bum, bum, bum. Bum, 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 bum. I think Are you ready? secret superpower, Mel, bum, is coming bum, up bum, with Would You Rathers. Bum, 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 bum. Um, <laughs> I agree. <laughs> you are so fucking good at them. Some of these are rough. <laughs> These, listener, are all scenarios that have come out of the books we read in the last fiscal year. Yep. And we are going to present them to you now with our commentary. <laughs> also, we would love to hear your answers. Please. Uh, Feel free tell to tell like, us everything. Let us know what your answers would be to these would you rathers. Because like yeah. I said, some of these are bad. <laughs> all right, Mel. Would you rather... Yeah. Get in a car accident and carry an injured dog for miles through some murder woods to meet your future partner. Okay. <laughs> or would you rather spend six days in a shitty chicken coop, almost <laughs> dying of scarlet fever, in order to have your stubborn crush finally agree to marry you? <laughs> I think I have to do the chicken coop just because it's funnier. <laughs> <laughs> okay, fair. Mine is dog. I, <laughs> uh, you know, no thank you. Although I will say that what's going to complicate this for you is the hero you would win with the chicken coop. You lost your mind over that hero. You lost your I ever did. loving mind. And I would actually go way better with a Rex. That's a man with a frown. You so know, I should, if we knew what the outcome was and not the path to If get we there, knew what the outcome was, I'd take the shitty chicken coop. Yeah. I would carry that dog for miles. Yeah. Mm-hmm. <laughs> By the way, I feel like I have to clarify to listener. Somebody whose ensemble includes a frown does not equate Sebastian. These are two no. separate things. These are yes. two separate flavors of person. Just, yeah. just so you don't accidentally think that we're just saying that. And they're, no. to be clear, shitty chicken coop man is also a Sebastian. Right. But not every Sebastian is a frown, and yeah. not every frown is a Sebastian. Because Kate, yeah. I, Kate's not a Sebastian. No, Kate's Kate, great. Kate's just... <laughs> Kate is really well-adjusted, <laughs> you know? <laughs> so well-adjusted. <laughs> so stable. Oh, God. Thank you so much for listening. We'll be back tomorrow with the rest of our Would You Rather dilemmas. And we're, we decided to give you two quickies of some bonus reading we've done recently. Heaving Bosoms is produced by us, Melody Carlisle and Sabrina Bradley. Editing is done by me, Melody Carlisle. Our theme music is by the incredible singer-songwriter Brittany Fonts, and our art is by our resident HB author, Kate Pryor. If you like our show, remember to follow us on your favorite podcast app, rate us five stars, and leave a review. That small action is a huge help in growing the show, and it makes our day every time. If you want to get in touch for advertising inquiries or anything else, you can email us at heavingbosomspodcast at gmail.com. If you want more of us, visit patreon.com forward slash heavingbosomspodcast. You can also find us on Instagram at heavingbosoms, on TikTok at heaving underscore bosoms, and in our Facebook group, the Heaving Bosoms Geriatric Friendship Cult. See you tomorrow. This episode is brought to you by Progressive Insurance. Do you ever think about switching insurance companies to see if you could save some cash? Progressive makes it easy. Just drop in some details about yourself and see if you're eligible to save money when you bundle your home and auto policies. The process only takes minutes, and it could mean hundreds more in your pocket. Visit Progressive.com after this episode to see if you could save. Progressive Casualty Insurance Company and Affiliates. 
Potential savings will vary. Not available in all states. Everybody sleeps, but no two people sleep alike. At Coop Sleep Goods, we celebrate the way you sleep differently. We believe everyone deserves a great night's sleep with their own pillow. And the adjustable, customizable Coop pillow makes it easy. Whether you're a side sleeper, back sleeper, or even a starfish, we've got the perfect pillow for you. Crafted with our innovative memory foam and microfiber fill, our hypoallergenic pillows adjust to you, not the other way around. Just tailor the fill for the perfect fit. Add some in, take some out, until your pillow's just right for you. See why luxury hotels and spas worldwide feature Coop Sleep Goods and why we have tens of thousands of five-star reviews. With our 100-night risk-free trial, you've got nothing to lose, except those sleepless nights. Get 25% off your first order when you visit coopsleepgoods.com slash comedy. That's C-O-O-P sleepgoods.com slash comedy. Your dining room is the heart of your home, where meals are shared and memories are made. At Ashley, you'll find affordable dining furniture in a range of classic and modern styles. Ashley's small space sets and extendable tables are designed to fit beautifully into any space. From cozy breakfast nooks and kitchens to formal dining areas fit for a feast. And with mix and match seating options, everyone at your table gets the perfect seat. At Ashley, style is served. Shop in store or online today.